Greetings fellow composers, it's uh, Elliot Daniels here and I'm doing a video that is primarily for the Global Composer Network and its members because since you've asked, um, GCN's had a really good run since its birth, there are thousands of members now and that ranges from someone who's literally only just starting out into this whole world and this whole adventure right up to 40 years plus veteran experience okay and to have all of that under one community umbrella for me i love i think it's fantastic um, but that's the other thing as well community because it's places like gcn that have enabled the composer community to thrive and to expand and you can see that from the way although we're kind of sometimes maybe competing against each other perhaps a little bit in certain fields um, but there is still that sense of a community where people want to help each other out you know and there are some fantastic people on uh, GCM who have devoted their own time for free to help out people like me and you to do videos to do tutorials to um, write blogs and things they've done that for nothing else other than to like put something back to the community you know which i love i absolutely love that and it's why for a while i've wanted to do something myself um the, the thing about that is firstly finding the time uh because my time is precious and it is often taken up elsewhere rather than talking at my iphone pressing record um but also it's about what to do like literally what to do what can i talk to you guys about or show you guys that's going to be of any interest for a start first it has to be interesting right that's the first problem second problem is has it been done before more than likely yes um so are you going to want to watch something that i've done where someone else has done it a lot better and it's on youtube and you can watch it for free probably not so this is the thing it's like what can i give back to community for free something that hasn't been done before something that might be of interest to at least a couple of people and if so then for me that's quids in that's what I'm aiming for really so I've had a bit of a think and I think maybe I've got an idea the home studio desk build hey, we have a topic um, and it's also about one on a budget, which is really useful to a lot of people out there, including me. So in front of you, you should have a PowerPoint presentation all ready to go. I think it'll probably be the easiest way to go through this is with a PowerPoint presentation. And you should also have a little annoying video of me in corner. Okay, so without much further ado, let's get on with this show. So custom desk builds, they cost thousands, all right? And you know they should do they should cost thousands because you're looking at taking something that is going to be made to your own specific requirements and it's going to have to be built with materials take up somebody's time and use their knowledge and their skill sets so yes there is a price there is a cost involved with this and if you have one of these already and this is just these are some I've just googled if you have something like this already then you know, you don't need to watch this video, man. What are you doing? You don't need to be here watching this. Go watch some uh, Tom Holkenberg or something useful to you. This is not going to be interesting to you. But if you want to be looking at doing something like this a lot cheaper, and perhaps not as glamorous looking, but cheaper, then this is the video you want to keep watching, okay? So these ones I've just Googled here. Um, I'm going to have a guess that this one here is custom from from scratch just because of the way the dope for keyboard has been integrated into the desk um, the other ones I'm not sure there might be specific requirements to the customer um, or they could be um, already manufactured and you assemble them yourself but you know like um, output output do a desk like that um, so yeah but all very nice all very useful uh, particularly like this lot here this is a bit more me um, I used to have one of these actually uh, I think like Fisher Price, it's like obviously my first sampler. So, okay, so there's a few examples there. What ones are built from this from scratch? I don't know. Probably, def I'm gonna say definitely that one. Um, and we're gonna talk about that, by the way. If you're thinking about the Dope for LMK2 setup, then I've got a slide coming up that's gonna be of interest to you. Whoa, 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 if I can just let me just interject there for one minute before he starts rabbit on again about other stuff. 
if your desk isn't set up right, there is a possibility you're going to have your workflow affected because you're going to be uncomfortable. All right. Um, now that you've got being uncomfortable, and then you've got having pain. Now, when you start hitting the pain side of things, okay, then yeah, your workflow is going to be affected, your creativity is going to be affected, and if you end up having to have some sort of injury or heaven forbid an operation because you've suddenly got carpal tunnel syndrome then you're going to be out the game for a while that's the issue okay so you've got to remember you're going to be sat at this desk for a very long time so it's very important that you are comfortable okay back to the lecture so moving on ah and there's the slide all right so the mighty dope for custom job so by the way, if this is your desk I'm using as an example, please don't think I'm knocking it. I think it's a wonderful desk. I love it. I would like to have that desk. Um, I'm just purely using it as an example because um, this whole dope for thing is uh, really popular at the minute. and I don't see it subsiding, um, certainly not for the moment. And I think what seems to be the appeal is the fact that the dope, because I've got one, I've got the, the LMK2 here. Um, the appeal is it comes in a flight case and if you don't like the flight case you can just drill the rivets out of this thing and then you can whack it into a desk like that and have a whole desk built around it which looks fantastic that looks awesome um, but there are some things to consider if you're going to go down that road and I'm not trying to put you off it I'm just giving you a little bit of advice okay um, these dope for keyboards they look like they've been made to withstand a nuclear blast and um, they are the ultimate hardcore gigging machine. Not quite true, I would say, in my opinion, my experience, and also other people's experience. And to put things into a little bit of perspective, this keyboard, within a year, had been replaced three times, okay? And um, I'd like to think that maybe it's just me and I've had some real bad luck with a whole batch of these. But go on Google and do some research and you will find that other people have had similar issues with these. USB problems um, with one thing, I lost uh, a whole octave once for some reason and I never got it back, I had to be sent off to Germany for repairs um, and like losing keys where they just start popping out the back of the case and just whenever you hit them they just break loose. So there have been issues. Other people have had issues, Google it, you'll see it. Even the big man who owns one of these, who loves this stuff, which is probably part of the reason they're popular, not naming any names, um, but even he has said that they are great, but they do have their issues. So um, all I'm gonna say is if you do go down this road and you're looking at buying one of these, the LMK2, which is about a thousand pounds or so, or the LMK4, which is about 13 to 1400, uh, pounds. If you're going down that road and you want to put it into this desk like this, then the only thing I'd say is just make sure that when that is integrated into there, it can come out nice and easy. Because I guarantee you in the first two years, you're going to have to take that thing out and getting it repaired. All right. And what you don't want to have to do is take apart all of this lovely desk to get that keyboard out and then have to reassemble this thing all over again. Okay. That's going to be a proper pain in the ass. All right, so let's not do any of that. Just think about the easy it is to put it in there and to get it out. A few screws maybe, and just get it slid out, and then you should be good to go. And that is all I'm gonna say on that matter, okay? Anyway, let's move on, let's move on. So I haven't used wood uh, to build my desk. I've used scaffold and I've used glass. And this is why. So scaffold, um, it's tough and it's durable. Um, this thing, you know, this, this, this stuff sort of keeps up buildings, really. So it's pretty tough, yeah? It's a good, tough bit of kit. Um, it can withstand a heavy weight load. And just to put this into some perspective, let me just show you this here. Let me just bring this into view. Okay, so there's more or less what I've got at the moment. And I'll just run through some of the more obvious points here. So the LMK2, uh, dope for there, that weighs... 53 pounds okay this is a samsung chg uh, 90 uh, that weighs uh, 33.1 pounds these are ben q what are they they're gl 2450 ben q monitors and uh, they're 24 inch and they weigh nine pounds each 
And what else have we got on there? Oh, the Adams speakers. I've got the Adams uh, AX7s. I've got two of those, and they weigh they weigh twenty point three pounds each. So just those things alone, not including the stuff I've got on top of here, um, we're looking at one hundred and forty four point seven pounds of weight that is being contained on this desk right now. And let me tell you something here. In this picture here, you can see. Um, like a TV and, and cabinet there. Right, so all this was over that side of the room and for whatever reason decided to move it this side. And I've literally just pushed the whole thing across the room like that. And there was no bowing, there was no cracking, there was no creaking, there was nothing that had to be readjusted. Literally, I moved this whole desk and 144.7 pounds of weight just across the room like nothing, you know? Um, nothing moved nothing changed nothing pissed about it it just held everything together so yes they are tough they are durable and they can withstand a heavy weight load fully customizable yes they are because basically what you're doing with this puppy is you're going to be measuring out how wide how deep how high you want this to be so you're making it tailored to yourself and the other good thing about it is you can also customize as you go along now let me give you an example of this. I don't know if you can see this that well in the camera, but I've made a little plate here for the mouse. Now originally the mouse was up here and I was starting to feel like aches and pains in the wrist from having it up here. So I've just lowered it down and it's a lot better. Now this is a recent addition. It wasn't like that before. So this is, you know, something I've customized later on after having to play around with things. I thought, you know what, I want the mouse a bit lower down because I, you know, I can feel like pins and needles in my hand so um, that's a good thing about it fully customizable sorry mr. microphone for hitting you there um, okay so it's cheap and easy to source um, scaffold if you go to merchants uh, like builders merchants um, eBay uh, other places uh, in the UK we've got something called gumtree which is where people sell secondhand stuff um, sometimes for very little money get it on there as well there's a place around the corner from me that is selling a meter of scaffolding for something like 50p 50 pence okay so uh second hand scaffoldings they're just giving it away they just can't get rid of the stuff so it's cheap and it's easy to find and finally it's easy to dismantle and rebuild and if you take a look at this picture this is where i recently moved this is basically the desk without the glass top this is basically the desk so we've got two sides two poles for the back and that's what pretty much it easy to take apart easy to reassemble so you know real good if you're you know moving around a bit um and it doesn't take up too much room i mean the poles are quite long um uh, but if you've got i mean i've got four by four if you've got someone like this it'll get in easy not a problem okay good so we've covered that lovely so let's move on to the next thing okay so putting it in perspective here i like this desk and i like this wood finish so i wanted that and that basically and that was a quote I was given so two thousand five hundred pounds without the keyboard so I still had to buy the keyboard that's another thousand pounds on top so three thousand five hundred pound oh no I also had to supply the scaffold as well uh, which well it's not very much but I still had to do something um, so yeah we're looking at a bit of money right and you're probably seeing where the scaffold idea came into play now all right looking at this um, but there it is in its basic skeletal form, okay, I, I, it's not pretty that much really to look at compared to the previous one, but I spent £200 as opposed to 2500 okay, so that's a big difference, and I'll tell you now that £150 of that £200 was just for the glass, okay, so I've spent like £50 on, on that scaffold setup, that's it, that's all I've spent, and a bit of my time. To assemble it and I'm not an engineer I'm not a scaffolder I'm not very good at maths okay and if I can work this out and put it together then so can you all right so don't be fearful about putting a little bit of time in if you want to save thousands of pounds you know this I, I built this over the summer so I could have it out in the garden and then slowly assemble it in the garden checking the measurements putting the keyboard in there and things like that so it took a bit of time because I'm not very good at this if you if you know your way around this stuff then you'll absolutely smash it anyway so okay what I'm gonna do is just go through basic layout all right 
Um, so this is basic frame. Uh, these are keyboard stands because I had a keyboard stand that had like that, had that cross. It sort of did this. It was annoying, and I didn't want to go and buy another one. I had some leftover bits of scaffold from where I'd done some cutting. So I thought, well, let's try and do some sort of stands things, and it works. It it works. It really does, and I'm well happy with that that idea. Um, but anyway, so there's a basic carcass, if you want to call it that. Uh, here it is with the glass, which is basically three quarters of the money just for this glass, um, which I had custom made. Uh, okay, so this is a centre bracket I made for a centre stand, which I'll show you some pictures of. I've still got it, but it's not quite as um, large as, as it used to be, which you'll see soon. Um, this is optional. You don't have to do this. You really, you know, this is not something that you have to do. This is just something the way I wanted to do it, which is goes back to what I mean by it being customizable. How do you want to do it? How do you want to build it? There you go. You can you can sort of tailor it to how you want. Okay, so these are some top top hats uh, for the speakers. And originally I had Rocket KRK KR, KR, Rocket Six speakers, which fit on here fine. Now I've got the Adams, and you can see I've changed the um, stands. Oh, you can also, actually look, you can see it's in the other side of the room as well. Yeah, look, there you go. So it went over there eventually um, with everything on it. So now I've got the um, Adam speakers and I picked these up. These were like 70 quid anyway. They weren't that amount of money. But you can go as cheap as 20 quid for a pair of top hats depending on what speakers you've got and how big they are. Um, okay, so this is an optional extra. This is just a side bracket. Uh, for another monitor. I've actually customized this since to make life a little bit easier for me um, Which I'll show you in a bit in a little in a little while basically what's uh, what I've done there But this is like a vest amount that I got off a cheap monitor stand. I bought off Amazon I can't remember how much I paid for it. It's something I've had lying around for ages um, And I just took the thing apart and just kept the the vest amount to go on there instead and that was it really uh, just bastardizes it, I suppose is the term. Um, so here are these um, wiring clips, um, which, you know, just a bit of cable management, optional extra. Again, use gaffer tape, it don't really matter to me, but, you know, this is just ideas. I'm just giving you guys some ideas of what can or cannot be done. Okay, so this is how I originally had it. I had four of these BenQ monitors. Now, look. This stand, this 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 is a part of a stand, a, a four monitor stand that I bought off Amazon for £50, which I originally had. It had the stand feet at the bottom, and uh, I've taken that off, cut that off, basically, because uh, it couldn't come out any other way. So I've cut that out, and I've put it into that little bracket that I showed you earlier on. And that sat in there for ages, solid, no problems, no problems at all. Um, little hook that you can buy, um, you know, cable management, headphones, you know, there's options there. So, so... You can pause this and read it, but really what you, the first thing you've got to do is just work out your measurements. How big, how high, how tall, do you want the keyboard to go underneath your legs, do you want it to go on the desk, do you want the, the typing keyboard, quote keyboard to go lower, higher, you know, you work out how you want to do it first. So the first thing you've got to do is do your measurements, all right? And for me, I'm crap at measurements, and I'm crap at numbers, so it took me a little while to do it, all right? But I managed it, you know, and if I can, so can you, all right? But um, so that's basically what I'd say about that. Uh, these are the glass blueprints. Um, I had to Google what a lot of this stuff meant because I didn't know radius corners and all these other things. I didn't know what it was asking me for when I put the order in. But I've made these holes here for cables. This is a little cutout I made so that center mono center bracket stand could sit quite nicely around that. So these are these are exactly the measurements that I gave to the glass manufacturer. Except the only thing I'll say is the thickness. My glass thickness is four uh, millimeters, and it bows a little bit in the middle when I take the keyboard out. It's not a problem with the keyboard being there, but I would say if um, it, if you're looking at to put a bit more on the desk, or you want the keyboard to go on top, or whatever it is you're looking at doing, speak to your glass manufacturer about the weight load and the ideal recommended thickness. Um, and I think a six mil was probably um, where I should have gone really. Um, so speak to your manufacturer. Work out what you've got. You're putting a keyboard on it. Well, how much does the keyboard weigh? You know, what else are you putting on there? If it's like big little things like this, they don't weigh too much. I won't worry too much about that. But the big heavy stuff, if you're putting a monitor on it and a center stand, well, how much is that going to weigh? How much is that going to weigh? How much is that going to weigh? You know, and then speak to your glass manufacturer and say, this is the, the weight load. You know, what's the recommended thickness for this size glass? 
that's it. That's all you've got to do. It's just a bit of communication and just working out what you're going to put on it. So what you're going to need, look, you can go through all of this, but I'm just going to show you a few things here just to get you an idea. You've got these different connectors, all right? Um, so these are the measurements for exactly my desk. You want to build my desk exactly how I've got it. This is how you'd make it, all right? So um, you've got things like a three-way connector. So a three-way connector is one of these, yeah? Now, I didn't know this. I had to Google this, and I had to look on eBay, and you can buy this stuff for a few, a few pounds, you know, these connectors. They're not a lot of money. But this is a three-way connector there, okay? These ones that are on the corner. That's a three-way connector. Uh, what have we got there? A short T connector. That's a short T connector, okay? So you can see what that does. Um, there's a long T connector. That's a long T connector right there. Um, and base plates. There you go. There's your base plates. And um, what else have we got on there? Um... I'll cover these. I think I could cover those. Yeah, there you go. For the keyboard stands. Okay, so again, scaffold measurements. I don't know why they're uneven. Maybe it was just what the scaffold I had available, but you know, it's fine. It works. It's not a problem. So short T connectors, long T connectors. Okay, so 90 degree elbow connector, which is basically this bit here. And all that does is just stop the keyboard from sliding off the back. That's all that's there for. Okay. Uh, hook. Yeah there and was it rubber rubber cycle handlebar grip so so they're not in there at the minute but later on i glued some rubber cheap rubber cycle handle handlebar grips that i bought off uh ebay for like i don't know five or five pounds or something from china you know just cut them up and wrapped them around job done um so all these measurements have been made to my keyboard which is a dope for lmk2 all right so if you haven't got that keyboard and you're making it exactly like this you're probably going to have to change, adjust the, the keyboard stand size to accommodate. Um, okay, so the side monitor arm. So this is how I've changed it. So originally it came out of a direct angle, and now it sort of comes up this sort of way. Um, so instead of the monitor sort of being directly here, it's kind of, well, the, where the camera is now, that's on top of the monitor. So it's, it's in my peri peripheral vision. So it's where I prefer it. But this is, what's it, an offset 90 degree crossover connector which is this thing here, okay? So one goes that way, one goes that way. Uh, you can get all this stuff on eBay. What do you need? What do you need? Well, firstly, <clears throat> you need patience, patience you need. <coughs> <coughs> Glad I saved that to the end. <clears throat> an angle grinder, not an expensive one. My one was about 30 pounds, I think, if that. Um, a heavy duty half inch ratchet, that's so you can tighten up the um, bolts that are in the scaffold, a hex drive, hex head driver bit. I don't, I can't remember which size. I think it might be a 10, 10 mil. But basically, this shape is the uh, the shape of the bolts that are in the scaffold, and that's what you're going to need to tighten it up with. And finally, a spirit level, just to make sure that your glass is straight, because obviously, you know, it moves up and down either side, so you need to raise it and lower it and tweak it to get it. It takes a little bit of time. Um, but for, if it's going to save me £2,000, then I'm going to do it. If it's going to take me an extra half an hour, I'm going to do it. Um, and what else have we got on there? You got this, man. You could do this. You could do this. So good luck. Good luck. Thinking of you. On a serious note, if there's any questions about that and what I've put together there, or you want to uh, send me a message, I'm on, on Facebook. Obviously, a lot of you already know me. On uh, uh, We have to find me on GCN page anyway if not uh, my email address is at the start of this PowerPoint and uh, other than that if there's any other questions I hear no questions excellent then you are free to leave <laughs>